use LT Spice to simulate the operation of uh, an inverter and of a, a ring oscillator. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and make a new uh, folder. And I'm going to call this folder uh, LT Spice underscore video underscore five leave it on the desktop. Now I'm going to go open Internet Explorer. We'll go to cmosedu.com Then I'll click on this book web page, the CMOS circuit design, and I'm going to look at these models. Then I can use these N underscore 50 or I can use these BSIM models. So let's just go right click on that link and save target as desktop um, LT Spice video 5 save now I'm gonna go start LT Spice or switcher CAD 3 new schematic I'm gonna do a file save as and go to desktop and put it in LT Spice here and call this how about inverter um, let's just call it inverter save now I'm gonna go grab my MOSFET so I can get a uh, MOSFET terminal where the source is connected to the bulk or three terminals always or what's more preferable or preferable for integrated circuits the four terminal and MOS device notice this uses the uh, symbol that indicates the substrate which is P type to the N channel diode or model so I'll say OK now I need to do several things here before I proceed I'm gonna right click on there and I'm gonna set the size and I'm gonna use the 50 nanometer models and so the minimum L is 50 nanometers and I'm going to set the width to 500 nanometers or one half micron. Let's just use 0.5 U instead of 500 nanometers. Now the model name it says is NMOS. That's not what the model name is in my file. It's N underscore 50 nano. And just to verify that, let's go back to our desktop. Open our models. Let's change the view to list open our models and go down here and our model name is N underscore 50 N and for our PMOS it's P underscore 50 nanometer and the model name is CMOS EDU models dot text so I'm gonna remember that and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, put that in to my uh, netlist right now before I forget spice directive I'm going to include the models and they were uh, I've already forgotten the model name <laughs> CMOS edu model underscore models we'll drop that there and let's go over here and we'll just hit escape. Now notice the size isn't showing on this model. If I press control and then right click, I can make the model show by clicking visible. So again, that was right click with the control button pressed. And so before I go anywhere, do anything more, I'm going to adjust these so that they're a little more. Uh, centered on the device. Now I can go connect all three of those terminals by doing that and I can go add my PMOS device PMOS 4 and then I'm going to add a node that's called uh, let's set the model for this one actually we can right click on this or we can do a control right click set the model to uh, let's see this was P underscore 50 N this will be P underscore P underscore 50 N the other was N underscore 50 N and then I can set value to 
which actually let's wait on that say OK I'm going to right click without the control and I'll set the length of this to 50 nano and the width to 1 micro because in this process the PMOS are have half the mobility of the NMOS and then I'm going to go press control and right click and then make those visible come up here and I'm going to adjust the positions again because I want to copy these once I get them in now I'll take my wires and connect them up Whoops. Let's get rid of that little mistake. And then let's go put a wire up here. And then let's call that node VDD. And let's say that it's an input. And drop it right here. Then let's call in an input. and out an output and wire them up now watch what happens if I do that and I do that and then I hit fit escape if I take now and I drag this back here notice how it becomes a tab Notice what happens if I select this and I do a move. It moves that little piece, changes the output to an output, and then I can delete it. And then I can stretch these over. Okay, so I've got one mistake here, which is I haven't connected the body up. And so I'll go connect the body of that up. Now, just to make sure everything's correct, let me view my net list. And let's see, I've got dot include the CMOS models this stuff I can get rid of because it won't be used so I've got out out so source and drain of the MOSFETs are interchangeable but if I wanted I could flip the PMOS device around so it went drain gate source then it says unconnected pin 0 unconnected pin 1 oops I've got an error so let's go over here and see what happens oh it didn't like the way I uh, connected those up so I'm gonna go connect them up like this and I'll connect this one up like that then I'll take these devices and move them over a little and now I'll view my net list again out in zero zero VDD in out VDD now I'm gonna do a simulation but I'm gonna make a mistake so let's save it and I'm going to uh, and we'll right click here and let's add a line so I don't hit enter I hit control M just like it says right there and I'm gonna do a DC sweep of um, V in from 0 to 1 or actually why don't I leave it why don't I hit cancel and do it with a spice directive just to there's so many different ways of doing things spice analysis DC sweep V in from 0 to 1 in 1 millivolt steps so I drop that down there and I could have put it here as well um, Boy, there's just so many different ways of doing things. Let's put a voltage source here now. And let's call it V in before we go too much further because that's the source we're sweeping. Let's give it a value of 0 because it doesn't mean anything because we're sweeping it from 0 to 1. Let's drop in a ground. Let's come up here and make a connection. Connection there. Let's stretch this over just to see. Oops. Um, let's move it over and then we'll put a wire over like that just to make it neat. Alright, so we've got our input there. Now I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to run the sim, but notice my mistake is I haven't got a VDD in the circuit. 
So I'm going to go run the sim. And you know, um, the white background shows up better, so I'm going to go change my color preferences. So change the background to white, so it shows up better in the displays. OK. Why don't we change trace one to black? OK. And we can change our axes as well to uh, grid to black, so everything's really well. And then uh, axes. And then, eh, that's good enough for now. OK. And let's turn, let's plot our input just to make sure it's sweeping. And it is. Now let's plot our output. And our output's staying at ground. OK, so the problem is we don't have our uh, VDD in the circuit. So I'm going to right click on this. Oh, I can't add it there, but I can go over here. Do a control M and say VDD from VDD to ground DC1. I add that in, I rerun the simulation, and now my output changes from uh, 1 volt or VDD down to ground, just like you would expect an inverter to do. All right, well, you know, this is a neat simulation and all that, but when you're doing things, it's better if you um, have a uh, symbol and you do your things at symbol level with the sims. So I'm going to save this. Then I'm going to do a file save as and then I'm going to call this inverter sim and do a save. Then I'm going to close this, go back to my inverter schematic and then I'm going to start deleting things. And what I'm going to delete is I'll delete this VDD and the models Actually, yeah, we'll delete the VDD in the models. Actually, let's undo that. Let's hit fit. Let's go and leave the models in so I don't have to specify them on the higher uh, ranking net list. So normally I have to put this in or else it doesn't recognize where the models are. And I'm going to delete this and I'm going to put a wire in just in case I want to introduce ground noise or variations on the ground. And I'm going to say that um, this, I'm going to call that port digital ground. Now I can't call it GND because then it'll think it's zero. And I, again, if I want to inject noise on the ground, it's better to leave it as some funny name there. And that's an input. Say OK. And let's stretch all of these just to make my schematics purdy. And we'll. Okay, so let's save. Now notice that I've got four terminals VDD, in, out, and digital ground. Now I'm going to make a symbol for this. And so I'm going to create a new symbol. But I'm going to try opening this sheet symbol and it'll say I don't have one. Couldn't find it. Okay, so I'm going to go create a new symbol and I'm going to call this. Let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to do a save as and leave the pre, uh, the, the, uh, the type as a symbol file. And then I'm going to call it inverter. What a surprise, huh? And now I'll go up to draw and then I'll draw a line and go down to over here, back up. Then I'm going to go to circle, draw a circle. Yeah, close enough. Let's move it. And let's stretch that little point there. And I think if you hit shift, you now there's, yeah, I forget, one of them will force it to be a circle. Anyway, close enough. All right, good enough for an inverter. 
Now I want to add pins. So I can go over and add pins, which I'll just use P. So first one I'm going to call uh, in. And I'll put that right here. Notice how the pins uh, lock to their snap to the grid out. Put that there. Just pressing P, VDD. Put that there. And press P again. And digital GND. Push this here. Now notice I can display the label if I wanted. I could put it on the bottom. Say OK. But I prefer not to. But this is a common problem. You might, uh, if you have these pins mislabeled or you start doing really elaborate schematics, you need to go into, or symbols, you need to go in and look at the uh, pin table and then you can set the order and then you need to ensure that your uh, schematic and your um, icon match. So we're doing all very simple things. So you can go and adjust the order if you want. And you can double click on that and set this to 5. Say OK. And uh, now I'd get an error. Whoops. I would get a uh, error if I go to the pin table because that would be first, second, third, and fourth in the spice net list, how they're listed anyway. Okay, so last but not least, we can draw a line and do L. And I'll just draw my lines here. And these are more for cosmetics than anything else. Escape, L. You can put global VDD and ground in. Since I do so much analog stuff, I don't like to do that. I like to uh, have separate ground and VDD connections. So when I'm putting in noise, I can see what happens to the circuit, etc. Okay, so let's save it. Let's close it. Let's just go look at what we've got in that now. So we've got an inverter. We've got a uh, inverter uh, schematic or icon, and then we have our sim, which I'm going to go up here now, and I'm going to start deleting things. So let's just start deleting all these different things and then let's uh, let's change preferences here to uh, none change preference here to none hit OK and then let's drop in our symbol that we just made and now notice I have to go up here to my directory and I say OK and there's the symbol We'll drop it in. Then I'll come up here and just for this sim, I'll go ahead and connect that to ground. I'll put a wire in here, escape, wire in here, escape, put a wire down, wire up. Let's label that node while I'm thinking of it VDD. Let's move this one down so that it labels the output. Let's go ahead and nuke this and then move the input and just call this in. Now, let's see if I double click and I go down in there. I did put the dot include spice models. So I've got my in, my out. Let's fit the schematic, my VDD. I'm ready to save this and hit run. And I can plot the output. I can plot the input. Then I can go up and if I quit this now then I go back and I rerun nothing shows up so again I plot the input I plot the output I select this window I got a plot settings save plot settings it saves it as a PLT file I say save and I close this now there's a PLT file there and this is very useful when you have elaborate simulations I rerun and the things automatically come up. Let's do two more quick sims. Let's do the ring oscillator, but first let's do the uh, um, a pulse of this inverter driving a load. So let's go up here, do a file save, file save as, and let's call this underscore tran. Let's put this as a pulse, the input going from zero to one volt with a delay of uh, 
2 nanoseconds, a rise time of 10 picoseconds. I won't worry about the fall time. And you can see all kinds of examples in, at CMOSEDU.com. Let's uh, change this analysis to a uh, transient analysis. Put a stop time of uh, 10 nanoseconds. Time to start saving data is zero and a step size of 10 pico. Say OK. Let's drop a capacitive load on here. Go over here, wire it up. Let's see, I'm guessing the resistance of the inverter MOSFETs is around 1K, so I'll set this to, so I have a reasonable time constant, to about, uh, uh, let's say 200 femto. This is another thing. 200F is not 200 farads. It's 200 femto, meaning 10 to the minus uh, 15. So 1K times 200 femto would be a 200 picosecond time constant. So we'll save this. Now notice I don't have a PLT file for this, so I'll hit Run. And then I'll plot the input just to make sure it does what I think it should. Let's change the color here. Red. Red. And then let's plot the output, which I can click on here, or I can go up here and select it. And again, remember if the sub-circuit nodes are not showing, you go up to your uh, tools. Uh, control panel, operation, or whoops, save, 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 where's the save, netlist, save defaults, save sub-circuit nodes. Then you can push in and see the uh, sub-circuits. You see the inverter operation. Let's make this a little more nice. Adjust the sim time. 5 nano, OK, save, run. Then you can go in with your cursors, as we discussed last time, and make the measurements to see what's what. I can select this window, go up to Plot Savings, Save Plot Settings, and then it'll be Save Transient. All right, so there we have a simulation of a, the inverter driving a capacitive load. Let's make a ring oscillator, which is just a series bunch of inverters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit this. Or actually, why don't I just close both of these files and then do File New and then uh, call it uh, New Schematic and then go back in, select this directory, Inverter, drop the inverter in. Now I'm going to do the copy here, put this in. Come up. I'm not going to put a wire up there. I'm going to put VDD. See what happens. So there's VDD. Now I'm going to put a wire here. Then I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to copy this. And I can go hit expand. Just to make it hard, easy on myself. I'm going to copy this. So that's eight. Then I'll copy that. That's 16. Then I'll copy this. And then I'll hit fit. And I think I've got an odd number, which is, of course, important for a, a ring oscillator if we want it to oscillate. I'll come back up here. And I'll come back around. So I've got a ring. Why don't I call this node oscillator out okay and actually why don't I take hit this drop this over right click on that make that an output so it changes the shape okay Let's drag this over now notice in a real ring oscillator if you you have to probe this node, and when you put your probe in, it can capacitively load it and kill the oscillation. So you might put a couple of uh, inverters in here to buffer the oscillation, uh, so to buffer this so that the uh, you don't kill the oscillations. Okay, so let's save this. Now we got a couple of things. Let's go into our, well, we'll leave the sim in there. We already have our models in, but I'm going to put them in anyway. Whoops, cancel. I'm going to put my uh, spice directive in. 
I'm going to put VDD from VDD to ground, DC1. If I hit enter, it closes it, so I'll hit control M. Then I'm going to do a dot tran, just guessing 10 picosecond step size to 10 nanoseconds, let's go 20 nanoseconds. Now it may not oscillate, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to say use initial condition, so it sets everything at zero. Well, actually, let's not and see what happens. So I'll say OK and drop this in. And let's just put it right there. Save it. Whoops, let's say save as. Let's just call it ring oscillator. And let's, let's close that one. There's a ring oscillator. Let's run it. And let's plot. We can do an interactive plot by clicking on there. Oh, it oscillated. OK. So just for information, um, sometimes they don't oscillate. And so you can put in extra values. Whoops. See, I hit Enter instead of Control-M. You can put extra things like a dot .ic, the voltage of oscillator out starts at 0. And then use initial condition, so it sets everything to 0 except where you set initial condition. So we could put that at 1. Say OK, and then rerun the sim. And then it oscillates, etc. Now, let me... Uh, uh, well, there's all kinds of things we can do. Rather than doing anything anymore, why don't we uh, make a symbol for this and then quit? And then we'll uh, uh, let's let's save. Let's go ahead and select this window. Actually, let's select this window and go up. And hey, I can't save my plot settings, so I got to select that window first. Save plot settings. Save. So when you run this, it'll automatically plot. So I'm going to close that, and then I'm going to go up and do one more thing before we quit, because this will be the last LT Spice one I do for a while. I'm going to go to Save, File, Save As, and uh, eh, let's not. I was going to make an uh, icon for this, but I won't, which is just have one output and then put the VDD, or maybe two, and put the VDD in. Alright, let's quit here and I'll zip up this directory and post it.